Hey, hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to the Reasonably Fine Art Talk for January 12th. Uh, this is a tough one. I wanted to address the horrifying events of last Wednesday and how that impacts our little corner of the universe. As soon as the rioting died down, some of my painting friends were immediately posting that the siege on the Capitol was the legitimate protest of a stolen election, that the riot was not the work of Trump supporters, and that these were instead phantom groups dis disguised as MAGA folk. Assuming the pandemic is eventually quelled, one is sooner or later going to run into these folks at a painting event or a workshop. What in the world do we do about that? How do we cheerfully have a nice chat about three-point perspective with somebody who actually believes things that are not true? I'm not talking about folks with whom I have political differences, who would try to solve societal challenges differently than I. For example, I think passenger rail is the future and that America should invest heavily in it. Other folks think that that's an awful idea and that highways and airports are the way to go. Stuff like that. Fellow Americans are trying to make America better, but think the way that I would do it isn't as good as the way that they would do it. That's fine. I have many dear friends with whom I hold little in common in terms of policy, but we paint together. And at the end of the day, we grab a beer and we talk about painting and we're brethren and sistren. I can't wait to see those people again. One of the joys of creativity is that it transcends politics. But to paint with very broad strokes, let's say a three inch goat wash, just for instance, just because I've been doing all this watercoloring and a three inch goat wash is that's a pretty broad stroke, at least in a little tiny watercolor. And we will be talking about watercolors coming up in one of these weeks. Anyway, the folks I feel sad about seeing or I dread seeing basically fall into two camps. Now, a lot of how I paint relies on a simple illusory trick to have a couple of areas of really precise, really great detail and leave most of the painting kind of fuzzy. The viewer's mind will fill in the scene with exact detail. Now, we've all been at a painting critique and you're trying to talk about why the angle of the barn is off relative to the silo. And somebody says, I see a bunny holding a bouquet of flowers in the clouds there. And pretty soon everybody is seeing or not seeing the bunny and a whole lot else. Look, it's a matador, and there's the bowl. And the whole discussion goes galley west. In 2016, I did an eight by 10 inch field painting of a farmhouse in Texas. When I posted it online, somebody pointed out that there seems to be a little girl standing between the two windows on the left. Betty Sue, can you put that slide up? There we go. There isn't. There isn't a little girl standing between the two windows on the left. It's just the result of random scraping, squeegee marks, and paper towel. Well, everybody saw that little girl. I can't unsee her now. Then people saw all kinds of ghosts, a couple, various domestic animals, all sorts of stuff. None of it is there. None of it is there our minds just seek out patterns and try to make sense of random markings. This works well in the world of painting. It does not work well in the world of factual information. I didn't understand QAnon until I read a piece by a video game designer about how QAnon works. QAnon doesn't spell things out. It urges its adherents and its the people it's sucking in to do research, and it proffers enigmatic clues. Folks dig in and start reinforcing each other's wild imaginings. The most popular delusions basically get upvoted 
until they become part of the narrative. We're gonna post that link to the article I'm talking about uh, in the comments. Betty Sue is gonna do that for us. But anyway, let's back to the full screen of Charles blathering. I've, I've tried to, to talk with folks that we've lost the scourge, the scourge of QAnon, but you cannot have a rational discussion about representational democracy with someone who thinks Tom Hanks drinks the blood of babies. QAnon believers are, sadly, indoctrinated into an extraordinarily cynical and mendacious cult, brilliantly combining disinformation and merchandising. The people behind QAnon are really good at merchandising. Shirts, hoodies, flags, all that stuff. It's so revolting. And I have no idea how to get the people I know who have fallen into that cult out of it. The people who are QAnon adherents are seeing things that are not there, just as people are seeing things in a painting that are not there. <laughs> and I think all we can do really is pray for them and to marginalize their toxicity as best we can. More difficult for me are the people who I like a lot, but are now espousing things that aren't true. You can show them verifiable facts and they retreat deeper into this bubble of misinformation. These are the folks who ditched Fox for OAN and ditched OAN for Newsmax. And who just had it, you know, they left Facebook and went off to Parler, at least before all their data got breached. These people, very nice people, actually believe these untruths, these factual lies that they have been fed, that the election was stolen, that it was Black Lives Matter demonstrators who stormed the Capitol, that coronavirus is a hoax. You know the list as well as I do. Some of these are fellow painters. Some are art buyers. Some are workshop students. Some have been judges at events at which I paint. Some are doubtless watching this and may decide to unfollow me or not buy my art or not attend my workshops or whatever, and that is certainly their right. The blowback, however, after last Wednesday's insurrection has been strong. And thankfully, the Trump presidency is coming to a close, but there's an enormous mess to clean up. I think the way forward must include a reinstatement of the equal time rule and the fairness doctrine. Media outlets have been promulgating or passing on actual lies because making people outraged keeps them engaged and an engaged audience is extremely profitable. And the desire for money with no thought given to the consequence has quite nearly broken America. A conservative take on facts is fine, as is a liberal take on facts. But there is no such thing as alternative facts, as Kellyanne Conway memorably said those four long years ago. I once went to a lecture by a guy who had written a book about raising orphan bear cubs. In his book, he <laughs> but in his book he mentioned one bear that when it was released back into the wild, because what this guy could do is he would get these orphan bear cubs whose moms had been hit by cars or had been shot or something. He would get these orphan bear cubs. He would raise them and succeed in not having the bears become accustomed to humans. They thought he was pretty special, but other humans, not so much. Um, but anyway, he, he, said, he said that one bear, when it was released, took with him back into the wild his beloved uh, little teddy bear. Can you imagine? Can you imagine seeing out in the woods a full grown bear carrying a teddy bear in its mouth? I would pay cash money. But anyway, that has, that has nothing to do with the point that I'm about to talk about. The, the, the other thing he said in his book was that sometimes when he was feed, bottle feeding bear cubs, you know, there'd be like four of them climbing over him. And as he's bottle feeding one, the others 
would start suckling on his earlobes. When I went to see his lecture, I heard his words, but they didn't really sink in. Mostly I stared at his earlobes. Those earlobes, I thought to myself, have been suckled by bear cubs. When I see these painting folks then, when I'm going to be seeing them, I'm not going to bring up the recent unpleasantness. I'll smile and I'll be friendly and I suppose I'll be able to compartmentalize enough to pretty much just think about art and just discuss art. But I'm going to find it very hard to go have dinner with them or listen to their thoughts on how to capture a reflected light or pretend that all is actually normal. Part of me will be looking at them in wonder and in sadness, pondering just what has, in a manner of speaking, been suckling at their ears. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to me try to process this American tragedy. Uh, please take good care of yourselves. Please, if you so feel like it, uh, keep coming back to the Reasonably Fine Art Talks on Tuesdays. Uh, next week, I'll be talking about squeegees or watercolor or something. I just felt I needed to take this little time to make this point. Thanks a lot. You take good care. Bye-bye.